listen, uh, we're going to be back in the book of Joshua this morning. All right, we're going to be looking at Joshua chapter 9. Uh, last week we took just a short break. I, the Lord just impressed in my heart to talk about how the Lord is our shepherd. We looked at Psalm 23 last week, and, um, and today we're going to be back in Joshua. So just turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Joshua chapter 9. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm just going to kind of kind of go back to chapter 8 for a minute and kind of catch us up again. It's, it was a week. I know that some of y'all have slept since then, and you've probably forgotten uh, what we talked about in, in chapter 8. But, uh, you know, in chapter 8, we see where Joshua and the Israelites had their second battle with I. They had, in chapter 7, they had dealt with the sin issue of Achan, and it, God had turned away his wrath, is what it said, his anger from Israel. And he, he'd give them specific instructions now to go against I, against the, the land of Iowa again. And on this time, they were to take the whole congregation, the whole army of Israel against I. And they defeated I. Uh, God gave them victory. And then in, in the last part of, uh, chapter, of chapter 8, after they had completely destroyed I, uh, they went to, to, the, to Mount uh, Abel, Abel. And there, Joshua built an altar to the Lord, and he pre presented um, burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord there. And, and he wrote on the stones of the altar, he wrote the commandments of Moses. And uh, then he read the commandments. He says in the very, very last verse, in verse 35, that, that uh, there was not a word of, of all that Moses had commanded, which um, Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, uh, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. So Joshua and the, and the Israelites had this great victory over Ai, even after their initial defeat, uh, where Ai drove, drove them away from their land. Thirty-six men lost their, uh, warriors lost their lives, uh, and now they have gained a great victory over Ai. And now that brings us to chapter 9. Uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to read to you the first couple of verses here, uh, then we're going to stop and talk about a, a few things, and uh, then we're going to kind of summarize the rest of chapter 9 and go through uh, some other things, but... Uh, here in verse 1 and verse 2 it says, And it came to pass when all the kings who were on, the, on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowland and all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard about it, that they gathered together to fight with Joshua um, and Israel with one accord. So I just want you to picture this for a moment. All the rest of the inhabitants of Canaan have heard about Israel. They have heard about how God had given them this, this great victory over Jericho and over, over the land of Ai. And God had delivered them across the Jordan. They've heard of all this thing, of all these things that have happened uh, in regards to, the, to Israel. And, and it says that they, they came together as one in one accord. Um, so, you know, they looked at all these victories and, and now all these inhabitants, these six different, uh, uh, different places gather together with one accord to come against Israel. And, you know, when I was, when I was reading this and I was just praying to the Lord, you know, Lord, what, how do I make this applicable to us today? What do, we, what do you want to show me in this? And, you know, one thing I thought about was, you know, this, these, these cities... They were well-fortified cities. They had multitudes of resources and, and people and warriors. And, you know, and they, Israel wasn't, Israel was Israel, standing alone as Israel. But yet all these congregations, these six different cities, is, uh, inhabitants come against Israel. They join forces and they come against them. And so listen, the, the fact is, is that, you know, this was a great... This was a great foe, a great enemy that, that Joshua and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and Israel were facing. And uh, because they had heard, uh, I mean, jo Joshua's reputation, Israel's reputation had went before them. And they heard about all the, how the, they had gained victory over, over Jericho, how they gained victory over Ai. But the thing is, is that I just want to make the point is that, listen, this was a great enemy, a great, a great foe that they were facing. <coughs> And I've got several points that I want to bring up this morning, and, and the first one is this, and I want to encourage you, if you take notes, to, to write this down. But the first one is, is as Christians, we are involved in deadly spiritual warfare with a power far superior to, the, to our own strength. 
See, we're facing, listen church, we're facing a, a formidable foe, all right? An adversary who is powerful. And I think that we need to understand that. I feel like that sometimes we, we take for granted, okay, that there's an enemy out there that, listen, who's far greater than us. He's greater than you and I. Israel, Joshua, they were coming against a, 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 an enemy that was far greater than them. You know, the Word of God tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Nikki, if you will put that up on the screen for me. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He says, Be sober, be vigilant. I don't know, you know, I don't know what your feelings are on this, but listen, if you come this morning and and you think that there's not a there's not a devil, okay? There's not a, a Satan. I'm telling you today that he is. He yes. is very real. Yes. Okay? He is very real. And he has intentions towards us. And those intentions, the word of God tells us is to steal, kill, and destroy, or to devour, as we just read here in 1 Peter. And he is, the word says, it, it, it says that you know be sober to be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. Right, is roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's your adversary. He's my adversary. All right, and his intentions are to what? Well, to steal, kill, and destroy. To hinder whatever God may be wanting to do in our lives. And he stands as an adversary towards us. But yet the word tells us to be sober, to be vigilant. What does that mean? That means we're to be watchful, right on our guard, paying attention, be mindful. And I feel like the Lord today is reminding us that, listen, be sober, be vigilant, pay attention. And because, listen, any opportunity that he has to, to step in and, and to deceive and to lie and, and to stir up things within us, he's going to take. But we can stand strong and victorious, not in our own strength as we just seen with Israel. It wasn't about Israel and Joshua and his great army, that, you know, coming against this great enemy. It's the fact that God is going before them and, and it is going to conquer uh, the land of Canaan. And in the same manner, listen church, we have victory in Christ Jesus. And it's not in our strength. Listen, we're, we can't stand alone against this adversary is what I'm trying to tell you today. In your own strength, in your own might, in your own power, you will fail, you will fall. He will be victorious. But if you would, now let's turn. I'm going to bring brings me to my second point this morning. If you would, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 10. And if you would, if you have a pen and paper, if you take notes, write this down. Second point is to be delivered from our opponent and of his schemes. We must clothe ourselves with a spiritual armor as given to us by Christ. Church, I want to tell you that today that you have everything that you need to be victorious over this great foe. You can stand victorious. And what I want to do is I'm going to read through these passages of Scripture here, starting with verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 6. And here the Apostle Paul, speaking to the church in Ephesus, says this. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Not your might, not your strength, but in the power of His might. To be strong in the Lord. He says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles meaning his lies. Word of God teaches us that he is, he is the father of lies. And I'm going to read to you a passage of scripture and then we'll turn back to Ephesians chapter 6. This is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. And, and he says this. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. The 
father of lies. As we read, if we were to read on in chapter 9, I want to, I want to point this out to you. That in chapter 9, after, after this great congregation had joined forces and they're coming against Israel, there was one city that stood out amongst the rest of them, Gibeon. And it says that Gibeon disguised themselves as foreigner to the land of Canaan. As they were, out, they were coming from the outskirts of Canaan and they, they had heard about this great, uh, this great people, Israel, and how God had delivered them from, from Jericho and delivered them from Ai. And they were coming to make a treaty with, with, with Israel. And they disguised themselves. They, they dressed themselves in old garments and old clothes like they'd been traveling for a while. Their, their bread and their provisions, it looked like it was all old and stale. And they came... As, as, as this people that were outsiders because God had instructed uh, through Moses that, that when they were to possess the land that they were to come and they were to conquer all the land of Canaan. Not to leave any survivors but to completely destroy Canaan and possess, take complete possession of the land that was promised to them. So this people came in disguise. And when I thought about that, is that, is that not how, the, how our adversary works? I mean, he can come in and, and disguise, listen, the, the devil, the enemy doesn't come in the front door, okay? He doesn't come in making himself known, all right? He comes in as a deceiver. He comes in disguised. And that's why it's so important that we, as believers, as Christians, that we are sober and vigilant, that we are watchful, that we're mindful, that we're paying attention. That we're not taken off guard. Because I'm telling you, church, there's been multitudes and multitudes deceived and led astray because they weren't sober and vigilant. Because they gave in to the tempter, to the deceiver. Israel was deceived by the Gideons. And the Gideons came in amongst them and Joshua took them in and they took provision of them. I'm going to read to you just one verse. If you mark Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to come back there in just a second. But in Joshua chapter 9 verse 14, it says this. It says, Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. Did you catch that? I mean, Joshua and the Israelites were deceived by Gibeon because they did not seek counsel from the Lord. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He says that if you remain in me, I will remain in you. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We must remain near and close to Christ. In fellowship with Him. Being sober, being vigilant, watchful. So that we're not taken off guard. So that we're not deceived. <laughs> And I'm not talking about the enemy stealing our salvation, but he can steal your joy. He can steal your peace. He can steal the security that you feel that you have in, in being in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 13, I mean in verse 12 it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You know, church, I feel like that often, 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 we get so wrapped up in, 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 in fighting amongst each other, so wrapped up in, in struggling against flesh and against people and circumstances and issues and situations that we miss the fact that there's a spiritual battle. We get so distracted and tied up with the things that are happening around us, the things that we can see physically that, listen, those spiritual things that are happening, that, that's the cause of all of it, <laughs> we just miss that. Paul tells the church in Ephesus here that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Church, there's hope. We can stand against it. And that's what Paul is teaching the church here in Ephesus. And that's why he says here in verse 13, he says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And having, he says, stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth. With truth, church. Listen, he's the father of lies, but God is, listen, he's the author of truth. And, and truth, listen, the word of God tells us that the truth will make you free. It's, it's about the truth. And where do we find the truth? Well, we find it in God's word, right? We find it in Christ Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is our security. He is the truth. So when it says that we are to take up the whole armor of God and to stand there for having girded our waist with truth. Listen, we are to put on truth. And, and listen, the belt was what held everything together. It held those loose garments close together. And it prepared them and made the, 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 the soldier ready for battle. And it says having put on the breastplate of righteousness and Listen, that's not your righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's about us putting on the breastplate of Christ, right? In His righteousness. That we're to put on Jesus. And it says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Listen, it's the only way to peace with God is through Christ Jesus, the gospel. It's only through Him. He came that we may have peace with the Father. And then it says, And above all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield of faith. Listen, it's by faith, church. Not by works, by our deeds, but by faith. And, and we can stand against the walls of the devil because of our faith. The Word of God tells us that, <clears throat> tells us that, that by faith we are saved, by faith we are secure, and we can stand firm in our faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Our faith is what gives us hope. It's what secures us. It's what makes us stable. It's what makes us, listen, strong in the face of our adversary. And then it says, and take the helmet of salvation. I want to tell you that my, my pastor used to describe it this way. He said, that's the mind of Christ. We are to put on the mind of Christ. And it's to secure in our salvation through Christ Jesus. The Word of God says that, you, that we are to put this, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We are to be secure in Him, and, and that He is our foundation. But then He says this. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Right? Our weapon of defense. When we can go into battle, you can't go into battle without your sword, church. You can't stand against the enemy and his wiles and his lies without your sword. And that sword is God's Word. If we're going to be victorious over, our, over this adversary, this one who is out to, who, who's seeking whom he may devour as a roaring lion does. And we need to be secure in, in the Word. It, it's where we find our truth, our security. And, and this is our protection against His lies, because He is the Father of lies. We find the truth of who God is through, Christ, through God's Word. And we know that God said, the Word says that, listen, that even though that, listen, man was, that the Scriptures were written by the hands of man, it was given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, I've heard, I've heard people try to explain away uh, the, the, um, the accuracy of God's Word and, and, and its inerrancy. And they try to bring up contradictions that we find in Scripture. Well, listen, they don't know it as a whole. They look at it as a piece. And listen, that's how, that's how other false religions have been started all over the, throughout the generations is because they take a piece of it. And they try to... They try to Describe a priest of it, but you have to take it from beginning to end. In completeness, it is full and complete truth, and there are no contradictions. Yeah. But we are to be firm in the Word. And that brings me to my third point. The third point is this. The offensive weapons given to us by the Lord, or the Word of God, and prayer. Without the Word and prayer, we are sitting ducks. 
And I say prayer because, you know, often we think that the only weapon we have is the Word of God because we always stop it short right here at verse 17. But it goes on to say in verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Church, I want to ask you this morning, have you been praying for me? Pat told me this morning, she said, Randy, I've been praying for you all week. She said, I've just been praying that God would give you peace this week. So church, I want to ask, have you been praying for me? Amen. Have you been praying for one another? Yes. Have you been praying for one another that you can be strong? That your brother and your sister in Christ may be able to stand against the walls of the, of the devil? That they may be able to stand strong this week? Throughout their day. If we're going to be victorious. Then we need to be praying for one another church. Right. Amen. We need to be lifting each other up. I want to tell you today. That I need your prayers. I told you last week. I'm just a man like anybody else. And I have moments of weakness. And I have moments when I feel like. God is just too overwhelming. I can't do it. And I need your prayers. I need you lifting me up to the Lord for strength, for counsel, for guidance, for direction. And I want to tell you today, church, you need my prayers. Congregation, you need my prayers. We need each other's prayers. If we're going to stand strong against everything that the enemy is trying to throw at us, then we need each other's prayers. We need to be lifting each other up. We need each other. We can be victorious. In fact, we're already victorious, church. Can I just tell you that? Listen, we, we face many battles, but listen, the war has been won. Jesus defeated him at the cross of Calvary. And I want to close with this morning reading you one last passage, passage of Scripture that I find, and find great comfort in. Revelations chapter 12, verses 10 and 11, if you would turn there. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. Miss Nikki has asked me that I repeat it more than once because I take her off guard sometimes and I say, Nikki, it's gonna, uh, don't worry about it. If you can't find it, it's up here on the screen. And she's like, no, it's not up on the screen because I didn't hear what you said. So we're going to repeat it this morning. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. And this is John... The Apostle John, he's saying here in verse 10, he says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren. Who's the accuser? It's the devil. This is the devil. Satan in Greek means accuser. It says, Who has accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. You hear that, church? Our accuser, he has been cast down. And though he may come before the throne room of God and he may make accusations towards you, just know that we have an intercessor. We have an advocate. Right, that stands at our defense. Right, who intercedes before us, before the Lord. And when the accuser comes, listen, he stands in our place and he says, They are innocent. I have taken their guilt upon myself and I have crucified it at the cross of Calvary. Yes. The Word tells us that Jesus took our sins and bore them at the cross. And then he cast them to the depths of the sea. Right? Then he cast them as far as the east is from the west. You and I are forgiven in Christ Jesus. And there, therefore, is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And listen, we can stand victorious over the enemy today because of him. Not because of our strength and our power. If we try to face him on our own, we will fail. But because of Christ Jesus, 
You and I can be victorious today over the enemy. We, we can be sober and we can be vigilant, watchful, mindful that, listen, he's always around the corner trying. Okay? But if we stand on the truth of God's word, if we stand right, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, if we put on the helmet of salvation, Right, if we shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, knowing that we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, and listen, we can take up that shield of faith and every dart, everything that he, fiery dart that he throws against us, listen, we can be victorious over it. Amen. Not because of us, but because of him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what he has done. You know what, I can't sit up here and put any other emphasis on this than, other than, than it's all Christ. Amen. It's all Him. Amen. There's victory in Christ Jesus. And we can be victorious over the enemy through Jesus. Amen. Joshua and Israel were victorious in their battles whenever they sought counsel from the Lord. Whenever they did not seek counsel of the Lord, they ran in defeat. Don't think that you can stand and face what you're facing right now and be victorious over it without Him. Mm -hmm. right. Seek counsel from the Lord. When Joshua and Israel sought counsel, they were victorious. Remain close to Him. Don't stray too far away. The Word of God tells us, lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge, acknowledge Him. He will direct your paths. See, we get in trouble when we try to do things our own way. We get in trouble whenever we feel like that we don't need to seek God. And, and a lot of times, listen, it's not even though that we don't feel like we need to. Man, we just don't even think about it, right? I mean, I, I, the point I want to make here today also is that, look, in, 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 in chapter 8, we saw, man, we saw Israel. They had this great victory over Ai, and they went up to the Mount Abel. And they and they and they built an altar and they and they sent they, they put up forth offerings before the Lord, peace offerings and burnt offerings, and and that listen, they were celebrating a great victory over I. But they were taken off guard in chapter nine by Gibeon. And sometimes I feel like church that, that we can we can get so wrapped up in the victories that we forget that listen, there's still an adversary out there. He's still roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you know, the thing about, about Joshua and Israel is that they were deceived because a Gibeon came in and they presented some, some pretty good evidence. I mean, they, they, they came and dressed in old clothes and rags and like they've been traveling forever. Their, their, their bread was stale. Their wine was old. And you know what? Joshua and Israel did is they trusted their sight. They trusted their feelings. And they missed the fact that they were being deceived. And I tell you, church, that listen, the Word of God tells us in Romans, the Apostle Paul says that we walk not by sight, right, but we walk by faith. Church, if, we, if all we're doing is, is, is looking at the things around us, the things that we can feel and touch, then listen, we can't be deceived because our feelings can lead us astray. Right Joshua and Israel were deceived because they were trusting what they saw. And they did not seek counsel from the Lord. We must seek counsel from the Lord and not be deceived by the things that we feel, or that, that we can touch and taste and hold. That's not faith. Right? So I just want to encourage you today, church. Another thing that I want to say is that when God's people are victorious or prospering, it seems Satan doubles his efforts and attacks against them. I can tell you, church, I've seen it time and time again that, you know, when people get comfortable... You know, when, when, whenever, man, we receive a victory in our hearts and our lives, I've seen people who have come to the point, man, of confessing Jesus Christ as, as Lord, and, and man, they're on fire for God. And then the enemy comes, and it would, right, and he 
holds nothing back. And they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it because they haven't learned to put on the armor of God. To be strong in His strength. To be dependent upon Him for the victory. Church, we have to be dependent upon Him in the midst of our battles and not us. It's about His strength and not ours. So we're going to close with that this morning, church. If you would, please stand. time of invitation in this church if you if you've been struggling if you've been going through a battle if you feel like man everywhere you turn you're just experiencing heartbreak and just disappointment whatever it may be that you're fighting with this morning I, I want to encourage you to come and bring it before the altar of God this morning and give it to him it's victory in him and him alone and I'm looking to see the place where you are, where you are. Cause when you walk away, it's so bad. Yeah.